On Christmas Eve 1642, in the reign of King Charles I, the villages of Kyneton and Radway in the county of Warwickshire reported seeing ghostly armies in the sky above Edge Hill. They come back to haunt us. For several days, the ghostly armies returned to the Warwickshire sky. Only this time, they joined in battle. Men fought against their friends and family. My uncle, he was killed at Edge Hill. I can see him, he's, he's there. Fathers fought against their sons, and brother fought against brother. I can see the king, and cavalry, and muskets, and pikes, and all the dreadful things that happened. This must be a judgment of God. Just three months before these ghostly battles were seen, a real battle had been fought at Edge Hill between King Charles I and his supporters and the Army of Parliament. In the English Civil War which followed, King Charles was defeated, taken prisoner, and finally executed. This portrait of Charles I was painted in happier times. Charles was a very small man, but on this huge horse riding through a triumphal arch, he looks every inch a king. Charles I was elegant, beautifully dressed, well-mannered, ordered. He loved fine things, and he collected many works of art. He was interested in architecture and drama, and in science and mathematics. Charles once described himself as the happiest monarch in all Christendom. So why did things go so very wrong? Every year in January, members of the English Civil War Society celebrate the anniversary of the death of King Charles. On behalf of the Council of War of the King's Army, I lay this wreath in commemoration of the murder of Charles Stuart, Christian prince and martyred king. After the wreath laying, members of the society gather outside St. James's Palace, where Charles spent the last night of his life. From here they walk in a solemn procession to Whitehall, just as the King did on the morning of his execution. The weather is cold and frosty. King Charles has put on a second shirt, so he won't shiver. He doesn't want people to think he is afraid. So what does King Charles think about as the soldiers lead him towards the scaffold? Does he think of his father, James VI of Scotland and first of England? Or does he think of his wife, the French princess Henrietta Maria? She has fled abroad to seek help for the king, help that will never arrive. Or does Charles think of his children, whom he loves so dearly? This painting hung in the King's breakfast room at the Palace of Whitehall. He would never see his children again. The banqueting house is the only part of the Palace of Whitehall which still stands. For King Charles, it is the most royal building in all London. This is the place chosen for his execution. In the banqueting house, King Charles sat in state. Here he entertained foreign ambassadors. Charles commissioned the best artist of the day to paint a series of pictures on the ceiling of the hall showing his father, James I, giving good government to his countries. The banqueting house was also a kind of theatre in which enormously dramatic plays were put on for King Charles and his family.
the stories were often very similar. They told of a country in chaos and misery, battered by winds and storms, where the forces of witchcraft and evil had taken control. With the arrival of the courtly figures, the storm ends, and the wilderness is transformed into a garden. Royal government returns to drive out rebellion and disorder, and restore peace and prosperity. Sometimes members of the court would take part in the masque, including Queen Henrietta herself, who loved dressing up and acting. Sometimes the mask would end with a Christ-like figure of the king descending from heaven to recover his kingdom. God bless your majesty! King Charles believed that he'd been appointed by God to rule the country, and that everybody should be obedient to his will. Many people in England did not agree with the idea that all power and authority should be given to one man. They made their voice heard in the House of Commons. For 11 years, Charles had ruled without the help of Parliament. But now he was so desperately short of money, he was forced to recall the MPs so they could approve new taxes. The MPs, however, had other ideas. They wanted to discuss a number of serious complaints. I object to the way the king fines men for non-existent crimes. I object to the way he seeks to raise taxes using ancient laws without the approval of Parliament. The influence of Roman Catholics at His Majesty's court is outrageous. We deplore the extravagance of the king's court. The king was outraged by the behaviour of his Parliament. He came to the House of Commons and personally tried to arrest five of the most critical MPs. However, they had been warned in advance and had disappeared. The King demanded to know their whereabouts, but the Speaker of the House of Commons refused to tell him. He defied the King. The King had lost control of events. He was afraid for the safety of his family. So he left London and began raising an army to recover his power. On October the 22nd, 1642, the king rallied his armies at Edge Hill, a high ridge between Banbury and Kyneton. <laughs> 